Hi everybody, we are taking that beautiful scenic loop just down from the Tomoka Park here in Ormond Beach, about two miles down from that state park entrance. Now the Dummett Plantation is located, you'll see these are actually the sugar mill ruins off to your right, about two miles down. And the Dummett Plantation was here in 1825, actually purchased by Thomas Dummett who had about 100 slaves, about 200 Native Americans that would come in when it was time to chop down the sugar cane. This was a sugar cane mill behind us. If you walk around to the back side of this fencing, you'll see a little bit of that clearing that would have been those sugar fields. Now, when it was time to harvest this sugar cane, they would come through and they would chop it all down and they would chunk it into big pieces and they would bring it into this mill. Now, this was some really hot and heavy work that they would need to then press down. Um, they had big uh, presses in here that would have taken that sugar out of that, that juice out of there, and they would boil it down into a thick molasses. That The next step was then to take that molasses, if some of it would be used for sweetening and um, making molasses cookies or other kind of cooking things, but also predominantly they would make rum out of that. So they would refine that molasses. Um, rum is actually fermented molasses. Uh, so maybe that's why rum is so good. You've got that extra sugar there. Now, what happened to this plantation about 10 years later? It did close down. Um, it actually, the Dummett family did leave and move to St. Augustine because the Seminole Indian War started up again. And so they kind of cleared out this area during that time. And Mr. Thomas Dummett did pass away up in St. Augustine. So don't miss this one on your drive around the loop. Make sure you take a little bit of time to get out, walk around and see this beautiful scenery. So we're continuing on with the loop. When you see these little like breaks in the woods and just feel that calling, that need to come through, make sure that you do. We don't know where we're at. We're just having a good old time and we're walking along and there's this bridge and I'm looking at ferns and I'm looking at seepage and clay beds and it's so fun. You just got to take that chance to walk through these wooded areas. If you see a trail, try it out. I can't recommend it enough. Otherwise you will miss out on these incredible, for lack of a better word, a jungle. I mean, I'm looking for monkeys out here. Here we are at the Ormond uh, tomb, the Ormond tomb park actually, that's here along the loop. And you'll find a wonderful little playground. And if you walk on those grounds, you'll see there's a historic marker and then come back a little bit further and you will actually find the tomb of James Ormond. Hence the name Ormond Beach. Now, this is the father. He died in 1829. The son, James Ormond, he actually fought in the Mosquito Wars. Now, you'll find out more information about that over on the entry area sign. But the coolest thing is when he was in the Seminole Wars, his platoon was called the Mosquito Roar, which I think was very apropos for this area. I think that's a great name. I think there should be a, a sports name called the Mosquito Roar. But this plantation area was the Ormonds Plantation, and it was called the Dementia and they grew indigo, which we know up in the low country, indigo is a huge crop. And that's a crop that's an early days crop. That would have been in your 16 to 1700s. Um, that was predominantly the crop that was grown, but also the Sea Island cotton was also grown in this area as well. So make sure that you put this one on your stop as you're going around the loop, walk your way back, and you'll see this wonderful little Scottish carn back here. And there you'll find the tomb of James Ormond. 